Wyatt, thank you for coming on. So we were just talking about how uh, you actually got a scholarship to basketball or for basketball. Yeah. But before we get into that, what's your favorite superhero? <sighs> okay. This is a, I have multiple answers for this. Cool. All right. Current, since it's relevant right now, current movie incarnations of superheroes, mm-hmm. probably Captain America. Fuck yeah. I think Captain America's kind of a fuck boy in the comics, you know? Because he's like, he's just too like, he's like a pretty boy, you know? And he's too yeah. like, America, you know, he's just like buttoned up and he's not. Totally. He's not, he's just white. He's not gray. You know, there's yeah. no like, darkness in him. So the Marvel version, I really like because he's like traumatized and shit, you know? Yeah. And he has, like, he's made some bad decisions, you know? And I like that. Um because it's representative of America, you know? America is not, not black and white, very, very gray, you know? Totally. So, but then as far as like, the thing I identify most with would be Superman, mm. because I have some savior complex and I feel like I can save the world. I'm not sure, but it's a good goal to work towards, you know? Um, but in terms of just the coolest superhero, it's gotta be Thor. You know, I, I think, I think Thor, just in terms of overall, like just everything, not, not the movies, he's whatever, but just, I mean, he's a Norse God. He's yeah. way cooler than like Spider-Man and shit. I think, I don't know. Totally, man. Yeah. I mean, I always come back to from the Thor movie and Kyle, I was like, fuck yeah, Kyle quoted it. Yeah. But it's that whole part where he's like, where I come from, science and magic are the same thing. And I'm like, yeah, so true. Yeah. But Dude, I have the same. I'm actually like li- verbatim what you said. Like right now, Captain America, because I'm like this motherfucker is the strongest dude. He does it yeah. through sheer force of will and like determination. Yeah, but it was, it was the moment whenever I don't even think it's in the movie, but it was in the trailer. I don't know if it ended up in. Oh no, it, it is in the movie. It just happens at a different time. Um, but whenever Thanos goes to punch him or whatever, and he grabs his fist. And he's holding him back with just literally, like you're saying, like just sheer willpower. Yeah. I was like, that's it. He's my dude. I don't care. Like, I just love, I love that stuff, you know? Totally. Dude, I mean, the same thing when he grabs Thor's hammer. Thor's like, what's going on here? Yeah. I just well, saw something about that. I saw, it probably was a fake image, but it was like Captain America holding Thor's hammer. And I yeah. thought it was like a picture from the next movie that's coming out soon. Could be, man. I mean, this is going to be an interesting one. But then Superman, I have the same hero complex. Most of my dreams, like if I was going to analyze my dreams, it's me yeah. like saving people who like are unaware of something. Oh, that's awesome. Every single dream. Yeah, I have a, a really lengthy story that I'm legally obligated not to tell, but I got into, I got into some shit having that exact thing happen in real life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well... Hey, you did it. another time. I'll be able to tell it next time. Good. Hell yeah. So, okay. Superman, Captain America, both are heroes that contain a little gray. And, I mean, yeah, Superman does. He's he's kind of biased in a lot of ways. If you yeah, he's, anything. you know, like I, just in terms of a symbol, I like I like Superman, but his portrayals and things and stuff never really, like, worked for me. Totally. They always just make him, like, I don't know. They just make him kind of lame sometimes, I feel. Yeah. That's like, all right. He's like a novice. He's like, I don't know what's good or bad. Yeah. And then and then yeah. it was cool when I saw it, but then when you think about it, it's kind of weird. But when he broke the dude's neck trying to save the family in yeah. Man of Steel, I liked that for what it's worth. I know people really hate that movie, but whatever. I liked Man of Steel, to be honest. I thought that was a, a good portrayal compared to almost every other one they've put out. Like the one with uh, Kevin Spacey, where the the dog, the little the little dog eats the other dog. They yep. like just co- totally brush over that. There's like two dogs, and then they show it later that the dog ate the other one, and they're yep. just like, "Oh, okay, that's yeah, whatever. Fuck yeah. that one dog." They're like, "When no one like just a dog's bones like covered in blood in the corner." Like, all right, <laughs> like ah, dogs, blue dogs. Yeah. Um. So having that that hero complex the understanding going to school for basketball and uh dropping out of college are two things that 
I guess, start that, you know, hero's journey in a sense. Mm -hmm. How did that begin? Like where, where were you before that, that led up to that moment that you then dropped out of college? We're good. Yeah. Sorry. You skipped around a little bit right there, oh, but, uh, okay. uh, so yeah, that was, I mean, that's a very accurate way to put that. Um, I basically was shown sometime during my freshman year what, who and what I was supposed to be, you know, at least the beginning of it. Definitely not the clarity that I have now and the, the drive and, and uh, like community around me and stuff, but I definitely felt like, okay, I'm not just an athlete. This is something that, you know, I guess that I was sold by, you know, my parents and coaches and peers and you know, I come from kind of a small town outside of Pittsburgh, like 30,000 people or so. And whenever you've got a six foot 11 you know, potential, like professional basketball player, people really don't give a fuck if you like doing other things. They only want to see you dunk, you know, they don't really yeah. care. And so I just kind of fell for it, I guess, you know, and I knew I didn't want to like the whole time I was like, I fucking hate basketball. Like you guys are making it not fun. Like it's fun to play and I loved it and I was good at it. But like mm -hmm. this is this, all these politics and stuff. It's not what sports are supposed to be. And I, I don't have a solution for it. I mean, other yeah. than like, relax, you know, for like all the coaches and parents and shit, just like chill, like let the kids play. But I mean, that's a discussion for another time. Yeah. So you know, I got to college and it was just way more, it was way more work than I was willing to put in, you know, like the people that did well as a division one athlete, like you have to love that shit, you know, and I didn't. And I saw kind of my freshman year, like what path I probably should have followed. Mm. And I didn't. And uh, as soon as I chose not to follow that path and to keep playing basketball, I started getting really sick. I started getting like, like autoimmune disease sick, like started developing this condition that I was like, what the fuck? Like what, you know, like I was super healthy, like just drank all the time, ate whatever I wanted, slept two hours, like was fine, you know, and like just did, did the whole, you know, 19 year old college kid thing. Yeah. And all of a sudden I was like really weak and like really, you know, sick and like kind of disturbed all the time. And, uh, that led, you know, one thing led to another, it led to me just like not being able to go to class and not being able to practice and stuff. And so I recovered from it, kind of got healthy and then just had this moment where I was like, oh my God, like this is all happening because I'm not supposed to be here, you know? And I, I now know that, um, that condition, that disease as sort of like a spiritual sickness, you know? And, um, and that's very common, you know, I forget what the statistic is and, you know, I'm sure there's a million contradictory ones that go along with this, but um, they say like 84% or 85% of autoimmune conditions begin between 18 and 22. Like basically when you're trying to like figure your life out. Interesting. And according to the sort of spiritual gurus that I have in my life, you know, that I've learn from different shamans and teachers and whatnot they they all talk about autoimmune diseases being a condition of of emotions and stress and something like that you're not you're not embodying what you should in your life that that's where that comes from is or you're holding on to trauma like all these different things oh. and through learning that and through understanding just how my body works and how i store emotions and stuff and how i'm you know not this like hard ass that I was pretending to be whenever I got sick, you know, and like actually just being in touch with who I really am and who I really want to be. And then all of a sudden the symptoms started going away. You know, as soon as I stepped into a paradigm of love over fear, yep. the symptoms go away. You know, I started treating my body better and eating better and, you know, doing the cold showers and the meditations and pursuing what I actually feel to be my, my truth all of a sudden all those symptoms go away and I'm like, huh, weird. That doesn't make sense. I mean, I guess it makes perfect sense, but it's yeah. strange, you know? So, you know, long story short, I had the chance basically to get away from this like easy and I didn't take it. 
And mm -hmm. so for the past like four years or so, I've been kind of picking up the pieces of, you know, my, my life that kind of like fell apart whenever I left school. I was like, oh shit, I, what am I going to do now? You know? And it took me a bit to figure it out, but I ended up starting a video production company and have been doing that ever since and am now looking to pursue other avenues and try to open up that thing and, and uh, you know, follow my purpose more clearly. So, Dude, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, man. I mean, the autoimmune thing, <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize this. Autoimmune, when they say you have an autoimmune disorder, it's just because they're like, they don't fucking know what's wrong with you. And they're like, yeah, hey, no, no. It's always cause unknown, right? They have no idea. It's autoimmune, man. Like, chill. Like, you, what can I do? Well, nothing. It's autoimmune. Oh, okay. So, what is it? Nah, eh, it's autoimmune. Yeah. What's psoriasis? Uh, your skin's angry. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, there's all these things you go, you go through it and it's, I mean, it's your body. They know like what it is, but they don't know why it is caused. Like, or yeah. they don't know, you know what I mean? Like they don't have, they don't have a clear answer on any of them because they're all, they're all similar, but like mm -hmm. different. And so some people's theories is it's the, you know, your lymphatic system getting backed up. And so your body gets confused and starts attacking mm -hmm. that junk. But I, I really, I mean, this is just me personally. I know a lot of people disagree with it, but I do believe that we have these emotional like energy fields almost in our bodies. And if you have a point that's like impacted and like stuck with, you know, all of these bad emotions and trauma and your, all of your stress goes to that place, eventually your body is going to be like, Hey asshole, like <laughs> I can't, I can't hold up with this anymore. Okay. I'm just going to freak out and attack this spot and make you like inflamed. Totally and sick and you know what I mean like I don't yeah. obviously that's the worst explanation ever for it but it's I mean it's as close as I could get and that's just what I feel went on with myself you know and so oh, yeah. that's really all I can do is report my findings because I know that the pharmaceutical industry didn't do jack shit for me so you know yeah yeah no with uh so I do a lot of Joe Dispenza meditations and one of them's like blessing of the energy centers uh but he kind of always pulls you into the heart space that's so the like, best. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, last night I did it. And like after doing the breathing and hitting the heart space, I just started crying like immediately. Like just mm -hmm. things needed to get out. And I just didn't even know. I was like, fuck. Like yeah. immediately. You don't even know what it is. It's just happening. And you're like, ah. Just yeah, I'm like, I'm gone. here. Yeah. Um, no, dude, I definitely agree with that. It's almost like when I think about autoimmune disorders and like if you medical mediums kind of cool dude, but he talks about Ooh, them yeah, most – yeah, most of them being the Epstein Barr virus. That's what he kind of attributes everything to. But, what, is, uh, what is that again? Dude, it's such a complicated virus. Um, but it basically is a virus attacking everything. So it looks like autoimmune disorder. Uh -huh. It looks like it's your body attacking itself, but it's actually a virus in your body attacking everything. But so it, how do you get rid of it? Uh, there's a lot of ways. There's a specific diet. Because a lot of times it's stored in like the thyroid or... It gets reactivated by body temperature spikes and electromagnetic frequencies. So you have to have less, if you get exposed to 50 megahertz or more in, electro, in electromagnetic frequencies, it can start to reactivate it. So it's fucking really hard to get rid of because like you got to make sure your diet's not feeding it and then you yeah. got to make sure your lifestyle is not feeding it. Okay. Well, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's, that but, stuff is so, like, I, I love it. Like, I feel like there's, it, there's truth in it, you know, yeah. but then, I mean, I get, I get why people don't even try, you yeah. know, they don't even try to fix these things in those ways. Cause they're like, what I have to do what? Oh my God. That's so outside of what I'm yep. used to. Well, I should just go to the place and get the thing, you know, cause that's quick and familiar, you know, cause you grew up going to the doctor, you grew up getting, you know, the cough medicine or whatever. Yep. And so you just attribute it there. You're like, well, if I need to take so me personally, I had to take these, uh, these steroids called prednisone. Yeah. It is the worst fucking drug on the planet. Like it works almost immediately, but I mean, it just like wrecks like every system in your body yeah. and it takes you like, I mean, I, I feel like I'm still recovering from it in some ways, like the yeah. amount of times I had to use it. Yeah. And so, you know, when you hear people like medical medium talking about these different ways, these different methods of fasting or. Yeah. you know, this diet or whatever to heal your, 
you know, adrenal system and stuff. It's like, yeah, I would love to do that. And I do do that, but I don't do it all the way. And so I, I put myself in someone's shoes who isn't even remotely interested in trying any of these alternative things. And it's like, of course people don't change. Of course people don't mm. you know, want to put themselves through that stuff. Yeah. Not saying it's an excuse. I just, I get it. You know, it's, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to understand the concept of front loading work. Like it's going to take a lot of energy now, but then over time, the amount of energy that it takes is nil. Like you're not really That's, spending much. It's one of my favorite. Do you know who uh, John Joseph is? No. Who's he's a, uh, he's a, a vegan Ironman athlete. He's also the lead singer of a famous punk band called the Cro-Mags. Mm. And, uh, or I shouldn't say punk. They're more like hardcore metal kind of people get so touchy with <laughs> and stuff. You know how it is. And so he, um, he has a great quote. He's like, people think that I, I'm, this isn't really a direct quote, but he says yeah, yeah. stuff like this all the time. It's like, people think that medical or that like buying healthy food is expensive and cooking your own meals is you know, takes too long and stuff. He's like, you know, it's expensive and takes too long being in the hospital at, at, while you're old, you know, being dealing with medical bills and dealing with, you know, sickness yeah. and, you know, getting your prescription and all that stuff. Like it's much easier to, like you said, front load that work and do it now and not worry, you know, so like so much. I think that's a big thing too, is yeah. people, it's almost like this self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like people, yeah they believe that they're going to be sick because someone else in their family had that thing. And so it's almost like they subconsciously attract like the diet and lifestyle into them, into their life that's going to cause that disease. It's like their mind, their food, the way they live, like their environment, and just like where they're like spirit, like wherever they're like attracting themselves, you know, they're, manifesting that disease into their life they're like ah well everyone's died of heart attacks in my family so you know fuck it yeah fuck it same thing with me you know you're not yeah. but i mean some people wake up to it you know they go wait i don't want to be the i want to be the first person to not die of heart disease in my family how do i do that yeah. and all of a sudden they own a health food store you know <laughs> in their neighborhood or whatever and they're trying to help their community like i love yeah. that stuff. it's it's beautiful Oh yeah, dude. Me too. I mean, I'm huge. <clears throat> One of my buddies described me the other day to someone I was meeting. He was like, yeah, Austin's like, if you take like uh, scientific evidence, like super research in material reality, and then also have like the other spectrum is like super spiritual, woo woo, like yeah. crazy esoteric. He's like a three out of 10, like more close to the, the woo woo esoteric at this point in time. Yeah. So like when I met him, he was like a seven or eight. And dude, I agree completely. I think the mind, I think what we don't understand is our ability to pull things into reality. Yeah. Uh, just based on like a belief, like a belief is the strongest intention that you can have because it's so cemented almost into DNA. Mm -hmm. That if you believe you're going to die of a heart attack, well, odds are you are. If you believe your girlfriend's going to cheat on you, yeah, she probably is. Like there's certain yeah. things that like yeah. you create just because everything you write shifts. You eat different you think differently, you yeah. do that one thing, you shut the door and lock it because you're scared that someone's going to break in at night and you like get all paranoid and like Dude, do weird shit. This is going to make me sound like the craziest person ever, but I don't care because it happened and it freaks me out whenever I think about it. So <clears throat> the story that I mentioned earlier, I, that I, I got in a, about a year ago, I got in like the horrible legal trouble, got arrested, went through this whole thing. It was a big, it was, it was yeah. not, um, but I'll tell that, I'll tell that story next time we podcast together. It's a, it's a fun story, but I was worried that there were like warrants out for my arrest, you know, like I was worried that like I wasn't doing the things right or whatever, like being yeah. out of bail and I, you know, and it was really bizarre. And I went through this period of like, really like deep, like paranoia. Like I was really afraid, like that I was just going to get scooped up. Like that there was, you know, that I did something wrong. I didn't really understand how the whole, I'd never been in trouble before, you know, so I didn't understand how all this shit worked. And I, you know, thought that they just like one day decided like, well, nah, we have to go get them, you know? And while every single time I would be in one of those States, I'd go walk my dog 
and in either in our complex or on the street, like outside of the the condo kind of thing we live in, there would be a fucking cop car just waiting there. And I was like, what the fuck? Like every single time I would be in one of those like paranoid states and be all freaked out and being like, oh shit, I didn't, you know, I didn't call the people and you know, they, whatever, like I did something wrong and I'm going to get arrested. There would literally be like an undercover cop car just sitting there watching me. And I was like, but then whenever I'd be fine, never, I never saw it whenever I was in a good mood. It was always like the emotions preceded that thing. I have no idea if I caused that to happen, but my sense is that maybe I kind of subconsciously knew there was this law enforcement presence or something like that. And so then I started getting freaked out about it and then I'd go outside and see it and that would just confirm my emotions. I really don't know. But yeah. the weirdest thing that happened was the worst, the worst it ever got was there legitimately was a warrant out for my arrest because I didn't call the bail bond place and they freaked out. <clears throat> and uh, I found out about that and I looked out my window and as I don't know, it was like, it was like comical how this happened. <clears throat> Excuse me. I found out about it, was like, oh shit, I have to fix this right now. I walk into the living room, look out my window, and there's a police officer sprinting towards my door, like literally full sprint, <laughs> like fucking, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like just completely paused like where I was and just watched him like run by my house and go somewhere else. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, oh man, what kind of video game <laughs> living in right now you know it was so bizarre but then a positive version of that 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 I have is I started experiencing symptoms of this autoimmune condition coming back uh back in January and I was like oh shit I'm gonna get sick again and then I was getting into Joe Dispenza's stuff at the time and I was like no I'm just gonna stop it with my mind yeah. I'm just gonna stop it I'm just gonna decide to like eat the things that are going to make me feel healthy and feel comfortable, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to, you know, live the lifestyle, like, you know, keep my phone away as much as possible, take the cold showers, you know, do the meditations and stuff like that. And just believe wholeheartedly that this wasn't going to affect me. And it stopped like the next day. Yeah. I like, obviously, like, I know that medical professionals are like, oh, well, this is why that happened. And actually, that was just a fluke and yada, yada, yada. It's like, well, why did it happen in the first place? I think it happened because I believed that I was sick. You know, I, that I believed that I needed an out from the, the thing I was doing, you know, so my body, my emotions, my spirit gave me this out. It was like, okay, fine. You don't want to play basketball anymore. Well, here now you physically cannot play basketball anymore. Yeah now what you know and it's like do you want to listen or do you want to keep experiencing this over and over again and so finally learning the lesson of like okay I get it I get what signals I'm being sent and like this weird loop that we get in you know with our bodies and it's I mean it's really fascinating and I do like you said believe that we create our reality like that totally yeah no I had when I lived in Florida similar situation I had this like random skin thing come up where I get like red dots all over my legs. And I was like, what the fuck? I thought it was like a bed bug. I'm crazy. I like bought like a, uh, uh, where they give horses to get rid of bed bugs and like took that. And like, I just did all this dumb shit. I but, actually, dude, you, you panic, you know, you, I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I can heal anything naturally. Uh, so like what you were saying a minute ago, medical professionals, I think professionals is a really loose term based on just a preconceived notion of a linear thought process. They went on at one point in time, but it, actually doesn't mean anything like all all due respect to doctors but some of them don't know what the fuck they're talking about like just because you listen i know i'm gonna get a lot of shit for this but like just because you were able to like put your head down and like study really hard for six years and like bust your ass at this one specific thing does not mean that i should listen to you exactly like, it means that you you know more than i do about the inner workings of the human body mm. you know you know about the chemistry I get it. Like you, you know, the anatomy, you know, every single muscle, every nerve, like I got it. Doesn't mean, you know, how my emotions affect my body and how yeah. my intuition and my, you know, treatment of things and just the power of my mind. Like it doesn't mean you understand that. 
you know? Yeah. So I would talk to doctors, you know, about this autoimmune thing and I'd be like, well, maybe, you know, my gut balance is off and that's causing anxiety mm -hmm. because, you know, your serotonin, yeah. quite a lot of it is produced in your gut and maybe that's causing anxiety and that is, you know, exacerbating the stress and then the stress is causing, you know, the symptoms to flare up and all this stuff. And then they'd be like, no, nah, well, I mean, there's no proven evidence of that. And I was like, what, you, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Like, there's all kinds of proven evidence about it. Like, you just have to link them together. Just because there wasn't one concrete study yeah. that showed all of those in one, in one paper, it's like if you look at the separate things and just link them, they make sense, you know? Yeah. I mean, I like, I'm not that smart, but I'm smart enough to know, like, some shit about that stuff, you know? Man, there's so much in that. It's like, let's start first with smart because what I think smart, like intelligence, quote unquote, really is, is just the ability to really well or to get really good at layering and connecting information. So I don't that's think great, intelligence really great way to look at it, yeah. is like people are like, I'm not smart. And it's like, no, you just haven't. I read 40 books on this. You haven't. Like you're smart. You just need to layer your shit properly. But what I think is the worst thing right now is, and this is what we're experiencing is specialists who don't understand generalism. Mm -hmm. So like with doctors, if you look at the course curriculum, it's really fucked up. Like there's like what you were just saying, like they know the anatomy better. They know all, that's not true. Like they don't like, they know which drug goes for what symptoms really well. Yeah. But they don't know how food responds. So of course you wouldn't know the gut lining unless you go like Dr. Craig Conover or someone like that. And you mm -hmm. go and you're like literally trying to figure out like, okay, here's how shit really works. Yeah. You're basically yeah. just very similar to if you go on the FDA uh, website and you go like, what's the best food to eat? And you just look at the food or the pyramid. It's the yeah, same it's thing. Like white rice, red meat, you know, like yeah, this. And, yeah. It's just like, I, I know what you're talking about. And I, um, my, my girlfriend is actually in medical school right mm. now. So <laughs> we, we get into this all the time where she's like, no, that's actually not, that's not true. Cause we just learned this the other day. And I, I'm like, so what? I just, that's, I always say, so what? Like, just cause you know, this thing doesn't mean that's the end all be all. It's like, no. yo, they used to give people cigarettes to make them more, you know, virile and like, and robust. Like, what the fuck doctors used to prescribe cigarettes like don't yeah. pretend you have all the answers you know well and that's the thing like to learn something oh man i have so much i, I like i build thoughts in like mm -hmm. in like webs yeah and so like the problem is it, it really stems from this a person's inability to question the authority and the information that they are then learning because they just put it into their model and they like plug and play and they're like, okay, that's true. Well, like, why? You have time. If you're like, truthfully, I mean, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Like, if you're a medical school student, you don't have time to unpack the layers of bullshit that your professors feed. <laughs> you. You're just worried about, you know, do, getting the test you're, or nailing the test and, and, you know, getting a good grade and stuff. you you don't yep. like, I'm sure there's, you know, moments where they're like, ah, okay, probably in 10 years, we're going to find out that's not really yeah. accurate, but they don't care. And the model I feel changes pretty slowly. Mm. You know, there, <clears throat> there's stuff coming out now that they're probably five or 10 years from even attempting to implement, let alone, you know, I had a doctor say to me, well, you know, the health of the gut there's, you know, really not that much to, to show with that yet. I, I don't want to jump on that bandwagon too early. So we're not going to, we're not going to go that route. We know that this drug works because, you know, it's been around for 35 years and why don't we just give you that? And I'm like, the drug also has like a laundry list of side effects that are like yeah. fucking horrifying. So yeah. forgive me for trying to use nature to heal myself, you know? It's like your body... This is one of my favorite concepts is your body wants to heal. It just has to have the space to do it. Like it wants so badly to not be inflamed and to not be stressed out and to not be falling apart, you know? And so it's up to you, I think, with your mind and emotions, your diet, lifestyle, mm -hmm. your willpower to 
cohabitate that space with your body's um, like autonomic urges or not urges, but processes that you can't control. You know what I mean? The same way that your body breathes without you, like you don't, I mean, like, yeah, obviously your brain makes you yeah, yeah. I know like we can get into all the technicalities of that, but the same way that there are certain processes that you have no control over because they're, they're involuntary, you know, in that, in that same way, your body wants to heal like cuts. You don't look at a cut and go like, and you know, laser beam your, your skin yeah. back together with your, your vision. It's, it's the same way if you give your body some space, you know, by fasting or just eating well, or like, they say that like calorie restriction is one of the biggest factors in healing It's just yeah. like, if you want to heal, just eat one meal a day yeah, and like, you'll be fine. You're not going to die you're not going to die. You know, it's going to take you a really long time to die. So don't worry about it, you know? And, you know, just giving your body the space and also just like the love and attention that it deserves, like with the amount of like, I mean, just think of what we go through, like with cell phone towers and pollution and traffic and stress and like all the, all the energy that people give off and just all the bullshit we deal with in our fucking TVs and just the, like we we live in chaos. Okay. And yeah. like for us to, you know, acknowledge that and be like, Hey, we can't just keep spinning these wheels forever. You know, there has to, there's going to be a, a time and place where throughout your day, you need to just like sit with yourself and just like, even if it literally is five minutes of you putting your hand on your heart and on your stomach and just saying, I love you over and over and over yep. again. Yeah. That's a massive change. Like I know that that's really out there and silly to some people, but like these things work. Like it's no, it's no coincidence that we're showing over and over again, people healing themselves with their minds or with their emotions or with different, you know, integrative sort of practices mm -hmm. that, allow them to get within themselves, you know, whether it's fasting or plant medicine or, you know, different meditation techniques or, or you know, manifestation, visualizing what you want to see there. It's not a coincidence that those things are all working for people. I mean, I can speak to it myself. I did it with my fucking brain. I yeah. stopped, I stopped an illness with my brain. Like I, I know that sounds so egotistical and stupid, but like I did it, you know? And like, I don't know. So I'm just trying to, put together, I guess, like why, I mean, obviously there's the money component, you know, why doctors are refusing to get off this pharmaceutical bandwagon, but like, you it's, know, blessed like Dr. Conover and stuff like that. And Dr. Engel for like doing, I don't know, like real, <clears throat> because what they're, they're asking their patients to like put in work. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not just going to be like, here's the band aid. you know, fuck off, go, you know, get out of here. They're asking yeah. you to like help yourself. And I love that. So I think a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of the problems really come down to incentive structures. Like, so for medical students, exactly. It's an A, it's not being good at and knowing what to do. Yeah. For, for most people Until trying they to get out and they're able to spread their own wings, you know, but exactly. most, most just keep following the status quo, you know? It's dude, it's brainwashing. I've talked to so many naturopathic doctors and they're like, man, you're going to go through brainwashing. Cause I was originally at neuroscience going for, uh, I was going to go be a DO or something like that. And then I oh, was wow. like, everyone was like, yeah, you're super natural and you hate doctors. Why? Like you got to yeah. realize you're going to get brainwashed. I was like, it's true. Oh. It's, I mean, yeah. And then, you know, from the, the doctor point of view, like they're going, Oh, well they're this, these, freaks on the fringes of society talking shit about stuff they don't understand, you know? And yeah, like, I get it. I understand the two sides and the arguments and stuff like that. And I think that having intense scientific knowledge mm -hmm. is important, but there's only so many ways you can break the body down. Like you, there's only so many, like it's so technical. And so yeah. it's these tiny little like inner workings of things that, how far can you go before you're just like spinning your wheels and it's like, well, here's this drug that affects this one cluster of nerves that yeah. will potentially help this condition that's related to this other thing in the body. And you're like, oh, what, what? Yeah, <laughs> how, how they heal their, 
their like electric field. You know what I mean? Like he'll yeah. do something that's like, I don't know. Have you ever, have you ever done like, have you ever done ayahuasca or like cambo or anything like that? I've not done anything like that. I'm on uh, what Dr. Dan referred to as level one. Uh, so Microdosing uh, or L- LSD, psilocybin. That's- yeah. Well, those are, I mean, those are super helpful. I mean, if used, with a you know shaman or like a professional mm-hmm. or something like that, you could have the same yeah. re- results with psilocybin as you do with um, ayahuasca and cambo and stuff. But when you you go to a shaman with the intent of healing yourself and you yes. viscerally feel your body changing and the different like like I'll share my first ayahuasca ceremony. I was going through some shit. I was really, really sick going to my first ayahuasca retreat. And I went there to learn like how to heal my body, you know, and how to like get my emotions back in check and like not be, you know, afraid of, you know, living and stuff like that. Some like really, really deep stuff. And uh, in the, what I do, what I did, I should say, is I would hold all of my stress in my stomach. Like Mm -hmm. I would, if I was stressed out, if I was nervous, I would, my gut would just tighten up in the most like intense and like horrifying way possible. Yeah. So during the first ceremony, I hated it. I was like, this sucks. Like, I want this to be over. Like, this is so chaotic and weird. And like, I just, I just wanted to take a shower and like, just be done with this. And I was like, oh my God, this is terrible. Like, why did I come to Peru to put myself through this, you know? Yeah. And uh, I'm just holding all of those emotions in my gut. And the shaman is kind of like walking around the room. And all of a sudden, I just see him like, and like, just point his head over towards me. And he like darts over like a fucking ghost. And he, he kneels down and he puts his hand on my stomach. And he takes a drag of this tobacco called mapacho. And he blows the smoke like through his hand. And I could feel it like go into my stomach. And then he like took another drag and like exhaled it and then like sucked the rest of it out. And then he like grabbed my hands, like whispered something into my hands and just like disappeared into the darkness. (laughs) And I was like, Oh my God, all the energy in my stomach is gone. Like he, he took it out. Like he took whatever I was feeling in my stomach out of my body and just disappeared across the room. And I was like, okay, fucking magic is real. I don't know anything about the world. Like that was my like wake up moment of like, Oh my God, like I've been so lost and to feel, I was like, okay, if he can do that, I can do that to myself, you know, like much, much better than he could do that to me. You know, if you really think about it, like how in tune we are with our, our stuff. And you know, when you have an injury, a lot of times it is just like trapped energy in that area. Oh yeah. Think, I mean, think about like what a bruise is. Like if you get punched or something and you have like this sore area, it's like, why does it hurt? Like, obviously you have these pain responses and like, yeah, you could go through the whole medical thing, but it's like the energy of that punch is now stuck in your yep. chest yeah. and it hurts, you know? And there's all these different medicines and practices that are literally designed just to get that energy out. And that's, I think that's like one of the most important things to realize, you know? Totally. Well, that's, that's real interesting. Then when it comes to like the autoimmunity would be like, it's the energy it's almost trapped is an interesting word, but I feel like it's more of just like, yeah, I guess it's trapped inside and breaking things because it doesn't know where to go. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's hard to, I think it's really probably person to person. It's how they feel. I mean, because we're, we're all so different. Like, yeah, we're all the same in this like woo woo, like kumbaya kind of way. But like we, I think the reason why, I think the reason why we exist as Mm -hmm. a whole, and this is like way down the rabbit hole is, is to experience difference and duality and experience. Like that's why so many different types of animals exist and so many different types of people with varying levels of, intelligence and intuition and physical size and shape and limitations and all these different things. And we're supposed to experience all of it, you know? And so everybody's emotional body is going to be a little bit different. Everybody, the way that they perceive, you know, like that same person 
might have perceived not like energy being trapped mm -hmm. in their stomach. They might have thought that their stomach was generating that energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They may, yeah. they may have thought of it as like, I, you know, my, that area of my body is sick and therefore it's producing this sickness energy, you know, when for me it was like, I'm taking my bad thoughts and storing them in a part yeah. of my body. And that, I mean, like that makes a lot of sense, but that's just cause that's my experience, you know, and it, yeah. it varies so wildly and people, I mean, I just encourage people to like, put on some, like, I know it's so corny, but like put on some fucking spa music and light a candle and just sit there and see what comes up. Like yeah. within 90 seconds, you're going to start thinking about something that you hate and yep. you're going to need to fix it and it's going to help you. You know, it's like, totally. There's a, and then if you get past that, if you can get a little bit further into that silence and stuff, you can start to like feel your blood pump through your veins and then you're like, Ooh, okay. So I'm, I'm alive. Like this, this machine is pretty incredible that I'm, living yep. right now and you start to get a little bit in tune with your body and you're like okay this is this makes sense you know and you you can i don't know like once you just start feeling it a little bit just that alone can take you to a different place because totally i think more importantly than the like actual healing is by doing stuff like this and learning about it you're taking your autonomy back from the pharmaceutical industry and yep. the all these people that are basically robbing you not only of your money, but of your, your life force of your energy. They're robbing your willpower and your autonomy from you by making you feel like you're a victim. And I think that's bullshit. Like, yeah, obviously there's all kinds of different ways to look at it, but that's just how I feel. Totally. No, I mean, they do, they make it go, no, you can't heal yourself. Only we can heal you. And it's going to cost you a lot of money. Yeah, it's going to cost you 60 fucking grand a treatment or whatever. Like, yeah. oh, you were in the hospital? Well, you have to sell your house. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That gauze was like four grand, man. It was some crazy have you ever good seen gauze. That, the, the amount that it costs versus the amount it's billed for, it's insane. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. an IV bag that costs like, I don't know, 90 cents or like $6. I mean, what's the difference? And then it's, it's $750 on your bill. Like, all right. <laughs> Totally. Yeah, no, that whole thing is just incredibly convoluted. But I think a lot of it does come back to what you're saying is everyone, like we're all here as consciousness trying to express through consciousness something different to teach consciousness or mm -hmm. it wants to express through us, whatever we are it. I don't know. Yeah. It's too it's many like, layerings of words. Who knows? I've been, sometimes, man, I look at this place and I'm like, this place is a fucking prison. I'm stuck here. <laughs> Interesting, yeah times i'm like wow this life really can be this good you know but yeah no, i mean you gotta it's cool though yeah duality is what gives you all experience so yeah, yeah. no but so i want to uh, let's talk a little bit about your shamanic journey because i know you've done a few now right yeah i'm about to leave uh next week for one as well so mm -hmm. i uh i have i have seven ayahuasca ceremonies uh three Wachuma ceremonies and uh, five Cambo ceremonies, four Cambo ceremonies. Uh, I don't know. Not that the numbers really matter, but I think yeah. I'm, I'm in the like intermediate stage of it. You know, I don't think I'm a beginner anymore. I think once you have a couple totally. under your belt, I mean, I'm certainly, I'll be humble and say I'm a beginner in some esoteric way and that we're all beginners. And even the shaman is a beginner because there's, there's no end to the things you can learn, but whatever. <laughs> I, uh, but yeah, I'm a little bit experienced with it. Um, just trying to further that growth. And, um, I mean, I can't speak more highly of it. I, I mean, I know that that's my experience and I can't really, you know, force anyone or, or convince anyone to do it, but the plant medicines for me are fucking legit. There's no, there's no way around it. And you learn that, you know, like Kyle said at the, at the fellowship yeah. uh, keynote or whatever, um, that plants are intelligence and you realize that there's this spark of light kind of summoning up through everything 
in the world, you know, and you look at like the rose bush out on the, out on the street, you know, as you're walking, walking by, like that has like electricity and like life in it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then you have to think, well, then certain plants are going to be more vibrant than others. They're going to have more energy than others. And, um, the way that the shaman, one of the shamans I've worked with described to me was that ayahuasca <clears throat> is literally the purest concentration of like kundalini life force energy that exists in the world. And that's why it puts you in that state. That's interesting. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's all connected. You know, you were talking earlier about intelligence being your ability to uh, connect things together. Yeah. So here's, here's a web of connections that kind of blew my mind when I put it together. So if ayahuasca has one of the highest concentrations of DMT, right, and therefore can put you in this heightened state for a long period of time to connect with your higher self, receive visions, all these different things. Yeah. And we know through kundalini yoga that the same thing can be achieved through really intense and committed disciplined breathing practices and your lungs produce DMT. And mm. <clears throat> if, they, if they call ayahuasca pure kundalini energy and through breathing, you can produce the same kind of energy. And that means to me that the breath is like the source yeah. of our, our life force, you know, that like that's the, mm. it's, I'm trying to connect this. I had it in my yeah. head, it's hard to like put into words, yeah. but you know what I mean? It's like your, if you're able to reach that same state just through your breath, then that means that your life force, like your second chakra of yeah. energy is, it comes like through your breath, you know, if that makes sense. Like, and that's yeah. the oxygen and your, your body's reaction to that oxygen is what gives your spirit. It's vibrant, mm. you know, totally. There's, and that's a big, there's a big thing that, um, Oh, who was it? Do you know who Aaron Alexander is? Yeah. yeah. The line podcast. He, mm -hmm. um, he posted something about the like Europeans seeing the Aboriginal tribes for the first time mm -hmm. and being amazed by their like perfect health. Like that the men were fucking ripped. They had perfect teeth. Like were, you know, even if they were like old, they were still, is that your cat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dog is being very good right now. He's just oh, sleeping over there. He's awesome. usually, if I'm talking to someone, he always has to bother me. <laughs> he always has to see what's up. But yeah. um, he said that the Europeans noted that all of the um, tribesmen uh, breathed through their nose and that they had this very specific pattern of breathing mm. that the tribe believed to um, be the thing that produced their like, robust health. And that in Europe, they all had rotten, shitty teeth and they were all yeah. kind of like sick and like hunched over and stuff. And he noticed a difference between the breathing techniques of the two peoples. Yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense, you know, that totally. if you're just like, like just breathing through your mouth, like right now my nose is stuffed up. Yeah. The difference in health that I feel when I can breathe through my nose versus breathe, I'm stuck breathing through my mouth oh, is... Yeah like yeah yeah it's really really remarkable but a complete you know side note from what you asked me but that's yeah no no i mean i go off the <laughs> with that i tape my mouth shut at night um, you tape your mouth shut at night i tape my mouth shut at night because most people end up breathing through their mouth during, <laughs> uh, at some point during the night and yeah. so that's like one of the easiest ways to train your brain to always breathe through your nose um and then i had patrick mcgowan on one of my first podcasts. I'm sorry. I can't get past that. You tape your mouth shut at night. Yeah. I'm not just like, I'm not making fun of you. I just think that's yeah. <laughs> like, totally with what Which, kind of tape. Just like it's, it's specifically for at night. Like it's got a little slit and like where the mouth and it looks like lips. Um, Interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll I link it. That, that link from you when we're done. Totally. Of that's course. Dude, it's interesting. So especially when I drink, because I try to quantify kind of everything. I know when I drink, like I'm going to either clench my teeth, which is a sign of sleep apnea. So it's likely that I start to mouth breathe and then the tongue falls back. Yeah. 
Um, so if I tape my mouth shut, I'm good almost always. Uh, interesting. Yeah, I uh, I clench. I have dreams about me breaking my teeth all the time. Really? Yeah, and they say that that's a sign that you're clenching whenever you're you're sleeping. So it's probably like the one thing that they'll give you as a solution because I looked all this up. They're like, okay, we'll get you a mouth guard, but mouth guards still means you're clenching. Like you still yeah, clench. it just prevents the damage to your teeth. And then you uh, actually develop more sleep apnea from a mouth guard. So I was like, why don't I just fix the root of the problem, which is just mouth breathing because my tongue gets sucked back, which then yeah. wakes me up, which then makes me clench my teeth. There you go. Yeah. Oh, we're so like, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's so many, there's so many layers to this stuff. And it's, it's really remarkable how, I mean, what I love so much about this, this fit for service group that we're in, yeah. um, like everyone's kind of on the same page. Like everyone's just trying to figure out like one thing that they're yeah. dealing with, you know, and they're being proactive about it rather than, you know, yes. go having someone else fix it. They're trying to figure it out themselves and it could be mental, physical, spiritual, oh. emotional, you know, whatever it is, like everyone, like, I mean, I've learned like so much stuff just from the, you know, the, I talked to most of the people, but like, you know, the, you know, 11 or 12 people I like really got to know, I've yeah. learned so much from them already. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Dude, it's phenomenal. I know the first thing that I noticed when we got there, did you go to Tai Chi? No. Okay. So no. when we were, we went to the park and I was like, fuck, there's so many people, all these people have different like full life experiences. And I'm like, I feel like I'm closed off. Like, I'm just like, nah, I don't want to, mm, I don't want to open up. And I felt that like immediately. Cause I was like, you know, like you get like the full spectrum of people from like super spiritual, like everything open, like full on, I'll do the craziest shit. All I do is talk about sex and stuff to yeah. like, nah, I came here for fitness and I'm here to get jacked. Like, it's yeah. Super interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah. And everyone's kind of like a little venn diagram of that you know of all those yep. little pieces and their circles are overlap you know what i mean like they kind of exist in the in the middle and it depends how much of each thing they're they're interested in but everyone's kind of well-rounded but yeah i get that there were i was i was amazed by that was the the number of not like gym bros but definitely yeah. more just like they're just here to like for the physical stuff and like whatever comes after is just a, a, a plus to mm -hmm. you know, their, their sort of physical fitness journey, which I respect. You got to start somewhere, you know? Totally. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, the best part is it's going through more than just fitness, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so like, fuck, I'm like, I saw some people and I'm like, I need to get more, I need to get fitter. So like now I'm like, okay, I'm going to get crazy fit. Yeah. But it's, everyone's got a journey. But if 120 people are willing to do ecstatic dance in a room and cry and yell together, I think yeah. then everyone's pretty open to doing some fucking baller shit. Yeah, that was literally, I mean, that was one of the single coolest things I've ever done. That was yeah. like the best. And I, uh, I, was so, I was so embarrassed. I was the first person to yell and it didn't come out the way I wanted to. And so it was just like this just shitty like grunt and I remember it was like a I'm glad it happened because for like 30 seconds or so I was just like oh that was so stupid that's embarrassing everyone's looking at you you know whatever yeah. and then I had this like no wait no one cares like nobody fucking cares yep get it, get it out of your head do it again and then I did it again and then I just you know kept doing it and it was just like such a great like just getting out of your skin like learning experience yeah. you know and just like I don't know. That was, that was the best. I love, I love that. And I, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't get enough of those things, but, um, I was talking to Dr. Conover is I was like, Hey man, I used to be like 30, 40 pounds heavier than this. Yeah. Like whenever I was playing basketball, like I was a lot, I was, dude, my neck was like out to here. I was a fucking monster. Really? I was too, I'm like two thirty probably now. I was 265 of just oh, shit. solid 611, 265, of just fucking meat. <laughs> and uh, after this like sickness and stuff that I went through and, and like I mentioned that drug prednisone, 
my hormones have kind of just been all over the place, mm -hmm. truthfully. And like that adrenal, like endocrine system kind of thing is just like yeah. crashed. And it just doesn't work the same way. And so I'm kind of struggling to like put weight on again. Mm -hmm. And I, I was talking to Dr. Conover and I was like, dude, I'm trying to get on some like test and get jacked. And he was like, give me a call. Let's do it. And I was like, nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> It was like, if anything, this meeting you was worth this whole, this yeah. whole experience. Dude. I was like, I saw you have that DHEA nasal spray. I'm trying to get fucking yoked. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've used androsterone before. Yeah. Uh, I haven't, I've used, is it like a cream? No, it's just uh, oral. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it a, a supplement or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Did it work? Uh, uh, see, I don't high dose it. You froze there for a second. So I don't high dose it. So I'm not like, uh, I take it more for brain health uh, when I take it. What is it just like a root hormone that converts to whatever your body needs? Uh, androsterone converts directly to testosterone. Oh, okay. So it's like, the, it's like a precursor to it in a sense. Um, and then I'll pair it with progesterone sometimes because those together work really well. I yeah, don't, but that's what I did. I had a, I had two like creams for a while that really worked. Mm. Like one, one had a few things that would convert to testosterone. And then the other one was progesterone to balance it, I guess. Cause if you're just all testosterone, then you're kind of out of whack, I guess. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to some guys at, at the Honda gym and they were talking about uh, using the maces and stuff and both, they all gained like 15 pounds of muscle just when they started using maces for training. I think it's because it tears your muscles in different ways that it's not used yeah. to. You know, a lot of traditional lifts are just kind of like the up and down and yep. the in and out kind of thing. And it's really not, I mean, those like weird fluid movements, especially whenever you're holding something like heavy. I mean, even alone after the, uh, which, uh, which class did you do? I did barbell. I have, everyone was in fucking barbell. <laughs> no, barbell was the worst. That's why we all talk about it because we're like that. Fuck it. I was laying on the ground like I thought I was gonna die. Yeah, I heard it was tough. We had a real, we had a real easy one, but it was a lot of movements that I wasn't used to in the body weight durability yeah. one, and I could feel just like spaces like between my ribs and in my joints like mm. opening up, just doing these weird yeah movements, and I felt like. I had a, I, like a fucking, I didn't, I mean, I didn't do any like curls or like push ups or anything like that. And I had a, like, my arms were like completely full of blood. I like oh, yeah. had a good, had a good pump after that. And I was like, what's this all about? Like, yeah. it makes sense. Like, it could just be being amped up in an environment like that with those people, or it could be like a legit, you know, yeah. like your body's moving in a different way. And so it's opening up in these different, you know, your muscles are, are tearing in these ways you're not used to. And I think that's a real, yeah, there's definitely something to that. Yeah. I think most of life is what I'm boiling things down to now is just addressing deficiencies, nutritional deficiencies, rotational deficiencies. I think that's big. I think that's why the maces and stuff work. Rotational, Movement. physically rotational. Yeah. Like actual rotations. Like people yeah. don't, we all like walk straight. We don't ever like move sideways. Like no one twists, no one moves their core around maybe yeah. for a minute at the gym, but there's yeah. like all these things we don't do anymore. Yeah, it really, that is a great, a great way of looking at it. Just exposing those deficiencies in your life. That's, I mean, it's the same thing that I was talking about with just sitting, lighting a candle yep. and sitting with yourself for a second very quickly your emotional <laughs> or your your life deficiency will be exposed to you yes and that's why people don't like it because they don't they're not i guess they're not there at they're not at the point where they want to fix it so for them just to glaringly receive the message of like this is what's fucked up like they don't yeah. like do that and like i've been there but i mean sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and just go for it cuz it's life is going to hurt no matter what and I think that you should, you have the free will to choose what hurts and how bad it hurts. You know what I mean? And like, totally. if you, if you choose to go through, you know, sir, we got way off the track of, uh, of the shamanic path, yeah. but if you choose to go through the hurt of an ayahuasca ceremony, cause it's not, it's not pleasant, you know, it's not a recreational yeah. job by any means you then can 
potentially get rid of all of the, um, what's the word, like involuntary hurt mm. that you may experience as, as a result of not dealing with that thing, you yep. know? Like there's, oh yeah, there's a cost, you know? I forget, I don't know if it's, do you know who, uh, what's that guy's name, Jacko? Jocko the, Willink. Jocko Willink, yeah. yeah. Jocko. No, it's Jocko, yeah. Um, the Navy SEAL dude. Yep. He has some, or maybe it's David Goggins, one of those Rogan SEAL people, yeah. <laughs> guys. They, he has a quote about, about that, where it's basically like, you can, you can pay that, like, it's, a, it's all about what cost you're willing to yeah. pay, or what price you're willing to pay. You can pay the sick, dying, and miserable cost later in your life, yeah. or you can pay the diving into the, the cold, the cold uh, bath, like your ice bath, and doing the breathing and doing the push-ups and stuff like yeah. that now. And God, I wish I learned that when I was seven. <laughs> You know, uh, but yeah. you know, no one that's not part of the curriculum, you know, and going back to the whole medical school model and stuff, like I could talk for I could talk for the rest of your life, like you would die before <laughs> I was finished bitching about the school system. Me too. Me too. Yeah. I used to think that one of my purposes was to help change that the education system, but now I see that it's we need a different system. It's not that. Like yeah, it's not changing the, you know, K through 12 model and this thing. It's, yeah, exactly. That's a really great way of, of putting yeah. it. Do you know anything about those like Montessori schools? So they- actually in our group, so Montessori school, uh, Waldorf is the coolest. Um, That's like a legit thing. Like they, yeah. do you think it's good for the kids and stuff? I don't know. Anything. Way yeah. Like Kyle Kingsbury, his son Bear is about to go to, uh, Oh, awesome. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Like it sounds so like hippie and lame, but like, it's real, like put, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't know what they do, but I imagine that it's much more oh, yeah. playful and constructive learning. Like yeah. where you're, you go, t- you, whatever you gravitate towards, they then can like challenge you in the ways that you want to be challenged, you know? Right. Yeah. Is that kind of the, yeah, they're not babysitters. Like, like what we structure school to be like, Oh, parents are at work. Like we need them to do something throughout the whole day. Yeah. That's kind of like, you know, the factory model of like, you look at the 19 in 1920 when Rockefeller helped sign the, uh, the general education board. Um, okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense that that guy was responsible for it. Yeah. And I mean, like they put the bells in there for changing classes because that mimicked the factories where bell goes, okay, next thing we do. And so, like, it was to gear up workers <laughs> to go to school, or you would have the kids of the workers go to school, and when the kids were old enough, they would be workers too. And so it was just funneling through that. And you wanted to see the grading system was only who could be a good worker or who wasn't. Like, do we want this person to work at our factory or do we not want them to? And so we built yeah, a whole fucking society around that model, which is just ass nine because age one – makes no sense like why would you go through school it like as your your ranking system is your age Mm -hmm. that means absolutely fucking nothing oh i went around the sun nine times so yeah i'm in this grade yeah i know that what about like actual evolution of intelligence yeah man that was a, a confusing thing for me uh personally um i was the first kid to know how to read right uh ride my bike like everything the first one to do all of it and I didn't I was like I I mean I and I felt like great about it I was super psyched you know but there eventually came this point where I was like I'm so far ahead of all these people and then I went to a private school that didn't base it on age interestingly enough they they did it based on intelligence level there was there was a nine-year-old in my sixth grade (laughs) class that was smarter than me I swear to God, his name was Taj. He was this little Indian <laughs> kid. And he was, he turned 10 like right before school. Yeah. But I was 12 going on 13 or whatever. And this fucking nine year old going on 10 was just wiping the floor with me in these classes. And I was like, 
okay, hold on. I'm not as smart as I thought I was, you know, but in the public school I went to, I was like, this is boring. Like, I don't, I'm not being challenged. Like we're literally the most notable thing that happened like all year, my fifth grade year was that I forgot how to spell throat on a spelling bee. I (laughs) so specifically feeling so stupid that I didn't think that throat had an A in it. Literally to this day, it still bugs me. It was, I tried spelling it T-H-R, like basically through with a T yeah. on it. I was like, throughout, like whatever, I don't know. And it, <laughs> I, still, I think about it all the time. <laughs> Spelled with an A, not a U-G-H, but that's another story. So are you a good speller now? I guess so, yeah. I feel like my brain like is like atrophying because of like smart technology and stuff like that. Like... I think I'm an eternal check on my phone. Just, just go for it, you know, and like actually have to type everything like well, because you can, I type like literally gibberish and it understands what I'm trying to say and just does it. And it like, I don't know, it's really weird. And so then I don't know how to spell things when I type on my computer anymore. And it's, I don't know. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I I think, uh, I think we're going to have a lot of trouble teaching how to learn in the future if we become self-reliant on these technologies which are completely external and use certain models of Mm -hmm. information because even let's say we have a medical diagnostic tool it's using a foundational principle written by someone based on knowledge that they learned doing something so it doesn't mean that it's accurate it means that it's accurate to the model of what was put into it which then we don't know how to double check because we decided, no, nah, we don't want to learn that. So it, it, yeah, yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, it can be real bad, and that's why I love, I I shower the people with admiration who want to learn. Yeah, external to the system. Yeah, because I mean, to think that this one group has it right is it's the same as putting all your faith in one religion. Yeah, like. To believe that this one group of people, they nailed it. It's like, yeah, they fucking got part it. of it right. Yeah. You know, but they might not have got the whole thing right, you know, or oh, yeah. maybe their whole system is confused from the get go, you know, and that. Exactly. So many different ways to look at it. I mean, like, think of, you know, going, just keeping it consistent, I guess, like the, the current, like, medical model, like the physician's thing, you know, the MD mm-hmm. kind of way of looking at, at medicine. Like that's all based on like one group of people like 200 years ago or whenever that began or even further that their assumption that everything was physical. Yeah. Right. But that's exact. It literally is reducing the human body to one of basically the four ways you can look at it. Mm -hmm. If you say that there's, there's physical where, yeah, you should, like, I understand the physiology and stuff like that. Like, those things all yeah. make sense to understand how muscles work and tendons and organs and what, you know, these different chemicals that your body produces. Like, I get it. Like, that's good to know. Yeah. But you're missing the spiritual, emotional, and mental components of the human being, you know? Yeah. And then let alone anything outside of that that we don't <laughs> know about, you know, some quantum fucking whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But, like... There is, yeah, the, the, this entire model that the entire world, basically, like, let's say 95% of the world perceives as correct is yeah. based on 25% of the human body. Yeah. And it's under the presumption that that's all that matters as well, which is preposterous. Totally. No one ever took time to map out society. That's the problem. Like, we were always like, just go, go run with it. Run with it. Fight war. Ah, war. Build. Ah, no one sits there and goes like, um, one person can't do this, of course, because then it's biased. But yeah. there's never like, hey, maybe society should look a little bit different. Everyone's like, wait, you're fine. Those people get killed. Yeah, those people people. got killed. Yeah, <laughs> they're all dead. John Lennon and Martin Luther yeah. King and yeah. recently Nipsey Hussle. Like, those are the people that. Yeah, the ones that speak up too greatly get murdered. That's, that's unless 
unless you're plugged in enough. That's the problem. Like if you uh, if you read the fiftieth law, uh, Robert Greene. Yeah, with Fifty Cent. Yeah. Oh, I have it. I have it on my uh, thing. Yeah. Oh, so good. But like, you think about like he documents how like you know he got shot the nine times, and he knew the people were going to try to finish the job. So like how he installed like insurgents and like got a group around him to like look out for him. Super mm-hmm. interesting. But let's like you do have to be strategic about how you can make any move. Same with conspiracy with Ryan Holiday, how Peter Thiel took down Gawker. You have to be, you have to do it right. And yeah. I think that's a lot of like the problems that we have is right now. It's fucking all, all of the systems are just filled with people who, who operated completely out of scarcity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a great, that way. I love that. I think that, um, excuse me, I think Aubrey was the first person to put that in my head. Mm. The idea of those scarcity yeah. mentalities that we have in, in life. And I think it probably, I started applying it to everything else, but I think the first time I heard about it was scarcity of yeah. love. You know, people yeah. pretend like, like obviously, I mean, like he was admitting he doesn't know if the open relationship thing is, you know, sustainable or if that is mm. the answer or if it's this very, you know, muddy thing that we never really yeah. saw, you know? Um, so that's, that's besides the point, but the, the idea that love is in abundance and that it's not this yeah. like finite resource. It's not like, you know, we get on this call and I'm like, Hey, Austin, man, like, I love you, but I can only give you 0.25% of my love. Cause the rest of it yeah. is, you know, the rest of it is, taken up right now it's like no i can love you just as much as i love my dog and my girlfriend and everyone like it's the same expression we just have different like um outputs and actions that we have with different people based on our relationship with them but the underlying current is the same thing and so pretending like you know we have this I mean, like, that's really what so many people's problems come down to is like, is scarcity when it comes to, you know, food or their environment or just their, the amount of love that they can receive from their family or their friends and stuff like that. They start acting differently. Yeah. You know, like think of people that you get born in a really bad neighborhood. It's like your whole life is scarcity, not only with like food and money, but with love and, and truth. Like everyone's lying to you and everyone's. You know, and you're just looking around and then all of a sudden you meet a person that came from there and they're a fucking dick to you. And you're like, hey, uh, I didn't do anything wrong, but that's they're just programmed on that scarcity mentality. You know, the same thing happened with people that I I always find that people that work in like finance and stuff like that operate out of that like way too much. You're like, I I have some friends that went to like Wall Street, you know, that kind of path they're not that fun to be around anymore, you know, cause they'd like, they operate in that like of oh, times running out kind of thing. And then you meet them and you're like, Hey, why are you being a fucking dickhead? Like I thought we were, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's very bizarre how we can be trained by our environments and our uh, situations to, I don't know, just expect like failure almost. In yeah. a lot of ways. And I think that's what people, people are now expecting failure from you know, the medical system, the school system, our government, all these different things, but then they're not willing to do anything about it. They're fully aware of how fucked it is. And they're just like, ah, whatever, the world's on fire. I don't give a shit, you know? That worries me. I I don't want people to give up. Now, the the problem is it's easier to quantify than to not be able to quantify, quote unquote, the infinite. So abundance is infinite. Scarcity Mm. is quantifiable oh, I only have a certain amount of love compared to, oh, there's yeah. literally unlimited amounts of love. And you're like, yeah, but I can't, I don't know how to think that. Yeah, because the, what's the highest amount of people you can like have in your life is like 150. I don't, I don't necessarily believe that. So I don't believe that because when you look at the actual studies, it they were doing that. That's based on chimpanzees. Great. It's based on graduating classes. People are like, we're just monkeys. Like, fuck off. Like, based on chimps and graduating classes at Johns Hopkins and a few a few things like that. Yeah. But I, I had a guy on the podcast who talked about networking. He said the number is actually like 580. 
which is like way more. It's like oh, a that's, fuck ton more. That's inspiring to know, I guess. That, yeah, well, the whole but that's thing- another limiting thing. You know, people like me get this idea in their head that there's only so much room in yep. my operating system and, you know, I'm not going to be able to make meaningful connections with people. Yeah. And to know now that that's not necessarily true, that's just, you know, another way that we limit ourselves, you know. Mm-hmm. I did it this weekend at the thing. I, I was walking around like, ah, well, I already met like 10 people today, so I'm just going to hang out with them. Yeah. You know? And like didn't connect with some people and I felt bad about it. It's hard. So I, yeah, oh, man, there's so many. Yeah. With networking, with any sort of meeting people, I do like uh, deeper relationships. Mm-hmm. So I would like to like segment and meet people more deeply at each event. But yeah, absolutely. I agree with the notion. I mean, anytime you get a number in your head or an average, if you ever hear averages, averages are all bullshit. If you read the book, I think it's uh, the average myth or whatever. He talks about how basically every average is completely bullshit. No one ever fits the average. Wait, say that, say that again. You got it. Uh, so averages, like as yeah. averages, almost every average is bullshit because it's just construction of data. No one ever fits the actual average model. There's like no, like whether it's like uh, cockpit size for fighter pilots, like they're, the seats made for an average fighter pilot. No one, if you take like the five, 10,000 uh, fighter pilots there are, fits the actual average model that they made the seat for. There's only like, 10,000 fighter pilots? I don't know. In the study that they used. Oh, I was going to say. That's yeah. amazing. One of my friends is a fighter pilot. I was like, wow, what an exclusive group. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like that with everything. Like if you build a society for, for averages or like you give like the average is 580. Okay, that one probably there's someone who has 580 connections. But there's probably some people who have three. And there's probably like some who have like, I got a network of a hundred thousand people, like whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Well, and it's also, you know, they're taking averages on what a meaningful connection is. Yeah. Like, what is that? Do I have to know like your address to be, you know, to be considered like a meaningful connection? Do I have to like send you Christmas cards or like, we just connect on this level and you know what I mean? Like why? I don't know. That's a great, I never really thought about that, that averages are bullshit. Yeah, they are. I like, I hate, oh, I, some of my friends will always go like, yeah, but like compared to the average, I'm like, stop fucking comparing yourself to the average because the more that you do that, the more that you think whatever you're doing doesn't have to be that good because yeah, you're to the down, average, you're down regulating your system. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's great. It's, I, I mean, I, I've gotten past that uh, personally myself is now I just think what if all the time, yeah. very yeah. optimistic about stuff, you know, and okay. that, just that change alone has been, I mean, that's like the, the thing I just told you about, I'm going to yeah. keep it under wraps still, but I was like, yeah. well, it's going to eat away at me forever if I don't take this chance. Totally. So I might as well go for it, you know, yeah. really no, like, yeah, it's just, it, but instead of being like, well, the average person, they probably, they'd get said no to, they probably yeah have a chance of making it it's like well guess what i'm not fucking average you know yeah. in any way so i'm just gonna go for it you know like that's Fuck yeah yeah having that even if you are average you know what's like i mean i don't know what the the like statistic would be of like what the most average person is like you know Here's five, the thing. five like, seven a hundred iq you know like but what, the thing is if you are average exactly average you're not fucking average because no one else is exactly average that's great yeah so even if you even if statistically you are the average of everybody else's average how many other people are like you you know yeah, like no one. no one like literally no one unless you have an identical twin and even then even yeah. then you're different like yeah. yeah that's i mean that's really a great i mean i do that all the time with people as i always go like ah well the average person like there, yeah. That's not a like this stereotype I have in my head. Yeah. Of just like the the average American, just the mouth breather that listens to the radio <laughs> and eats junk food and stuff. Like yeah. those people exist, but to clump everybody in this one thing and then blame a problem on them, it's like that's not how shit works. You know, people get mad at one group of people for doing this thing, and it's like, how do you know that all of them are responsible for that? 
How do you know it's not this group of people also, or maybe like three out of that whole group, you know, instead of the entire thing, like you're, like you're saying, you're just going off of averages and that's not, yeah. yeah. Wow. I never, I'm glad you brought that up. I never okay. really thought about that. That's cool. Hell yeah. So before we wrap up, I got to ask you, what is your higher leverage skill? And so a higher leverage skill is a skill that essentially it can be a skill or a system or a mindset, but it's something that you realize that you use over and over again. So for instance, like whether that is learning how to learn, because if you learn how to learn, of course you can learn everything better. Or if that's like learning uh, how to develop systems, because if you develop systems, you can plug and play those systems everywhere. So is there anything that you've used any skill or mindset or technique that has allowed you to do multiple things and you, repeatedly come back to it and use it uh often Ooh. <laughs> well i could i guess i could narrow down better what you what you mean there so like are you talking about a, like a daily habit that i have or something what, like a, a a concrete change in my mindset or something like what where so, are you referring to? yeah so it would be something like um you know, for instance, when I'm approaching anything, I approach it under the guise that because I know how to learn, I can learn anything pretty easily. It's a great mindset to have. Yeah. So, so it's these things that like a lot of people like leaning into failure. A lot of people like to use something like that where it's like, you know what, fuck it. Like I know I'm going to fail. So I'm just going to go in and fail and do my thing. And yeah. that's how I kind of, that's my skill to get past things. Mm hmm well, I, I guess I'll offer two things. Yeah. I'd say the most powerful like reset that I've ever found has been taking cold showers. Like I know that people have talked about that incessantly, but if I could offer a physical, like tangible thing that you can do is do the Wim Hof breathing and get in the cold shower and watch your just your outlook on your day change because all of the noise that you picked up while you were sleeping is just out the window or not even that like just do it like if you if you're about to go on a date and you're nervous yeah. take the fucking cold shower and you'll be like oh okay i'm good you know like it's it really is remarkable just the, i mean let alone the physical um you know the hormonal the immune system benefits oh, yeah. and all that stuff like push all that aside just the fact that you do it and you kind of wipe the slate clean and you come out feeling like refreshed and centered and like less stressed like that alone has been enormous in just me being able to like make rational decisions throughout my day, totally. like literally. And I know that that's, it sounds oh, so cool. like I've talked about it. You know, if anyone who has heard my podcast sees this, like they will be upset that I'm mentioning cold showers for the 97th time, but they're legit and I can't speak more highly of them. Um, but then in terms of my mindset and something that I use every day is <clears throat> I think that learning recently, like, <clears throat> excuse me, I think learning recently who I am, mm. like in truth and like what I could be and just having a clear vision of like what that person is and, and what they look like and the impact that they could have on the world has greatly led to me being able to make, like I said, better decisions in my life. And so what that looks like is, I mean, I'm 24, I've gone through, I've had a crazy, like a crazy fucking life, especially in the last four years, like life has been nuts and in the best way possible. Um, and the things that I've learned and the things, you know, the practices that I've developed and so forth, and just the mindset that I have it really kind of boils down to this quote that I've been saying incessantly and it's, it's attributed to Buddha. I don't know if he actually said it. <laughs> I don't know if Buddha was actually real. Like yeah. the point is the quote sticks and it's amazing. And it's the quote is the trouble is you think you have the time. Mm. And it's like, I know that people talk about like, Oh, you got to live cause you could die today and all that stuff. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like, you probably won't like if you're talking about averages and stuff statistically you're probably going to live 
at least a few more years longer, if yeah. not to the end of your life, you know, let's say. You might not, but that's okay. Because we are pretty likely to live to that point in this day and age, we think that we have like, ah, I'll get to it eventually, you know? And it's like, totally. you, you think that the world can wait for you to get your shit together, but it can't, you know? Like, the, I, I'm not like a big like doomsday person yeah. and stuff like that. I don't, you know, I'm not big into the whole like climate change and ah, we have to like, you know, all that stuff. But the world is like falling apart. Like there's fucking a garbage patch in the Pacific ocean. That's bigger than Texas. Like there's in Houston right now, there's a chemical fire. That's a yeah. spewing pollutants into the atmosphere and no one knows how to stop it. And it's like, people are getting angrier and sicker and all these different things every single day. And you're sitting there sulking in your loneliness because you don't want to figure it out. It's like the world needs you, bro. And I say it like, I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, all right, are we ready to do this? Like, are we ready to be a part of the, the heroic that's going to do something, you know, and it's going to make something good happen here because yeah. And this is an idea that's been repeating in my head over and over recently. And it's like, despite all of the oppression and all of the corruption and just the injustice that has happened to the people of earth by people in power and all of just the fucked up, like horrible shit that we are subject to all the time, like that there's poison in our drinking water and our fucking we're being lied to by our teachers and our politicians are taking money from all these things. And like we're being bought and sold and surveilled by cameras. And there's all this, the world is nuts. But despite all of that, I still had a good time. Yeah. And still, I still had a smile on my face and I still did the right thing. That is like, I will go to the grave knowing that. And that will be probably the greatest joy that I have, you know? And I think that, Having that mindset makes making decisions a lot easier because you start, you start looking at things not as like, oh, can I do this? Do I have the money? It's like, no, no, no. This is non-negotiable now. Does this feel right to you? Then do it. Make it happen. Because if it is true, you will, you will deal with any suffering, any cost, anything that goes with that decision in order to make it happen because you know that it's right and you know that you should do it. And so just having just I don't know, over the last year or so, a lot of those things have really like sunk in with me and have really been driven home. And now it's just made my life path non-negotiable. Now yeah. it's like, what are you waiting for? You know, like you think that shit's going to get better without you and it's not like the world needs you a lot more than you know. And that's not just me. That's all of us, you know. And so, okay. yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know where that came from, but it came to me somehow and I thank whatever force gave it to me, you know, okay. it's, it's really beautiful. So dude, it's fucking awesome. So take action, do what you want to do today. Book that ticket wherever you got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, you, like I said, you think you have time, but you don't have the time. Hell yeah. Well, yeah. why, before we wrap up, where can people find you? They can find me. Uh, damn. I've never done a plug like this. <laughs> <laughs> they can find me at a, uh, at Wyatt Haggerty, that's W-Y-A-T-T-H-A-G-E-R-T-Y on Instagram. That's where I'm most active and people can get in touch. Like I respond to messages and stuff as best as I can, you know, add me, like be my friend. I don't give a shit. Like we'll figure this out, you know, yeah. like, I'm not, like some untouchable person by any means. And uh, then uh, my business is lithograph.com. That's L I T H O G R A F. And you can find my podcast on there, or you can just search, you can just search Wyatt Haggerty on iTunes podcasts and find my podcast there. Um, you can find links to my video work. If anyone listening needs, I'll pat myself on the back and say, well above average video production. You know, it's not, it's not the best, but it's, it's way up there. Um, you can you can find my my email and contact information through there and we can get in touch about some great projects and then i guess i might as well plug death comes lifting because that's my uh my friend and i we have a clothing company this is one of our shirts here and it's a uh it's a horror and heavy metal themed fitness clothing line 
called Death Comes Lifting. You can find it at deathcomeslifting.com or at deathcomeslifting on Instagram. And it's just a fun, goofy thing that we're doing. And it's just something to Hell yeah. you know, spread some positivity and link two communities together. Because a lot of people that are into horror movies and music and stuff aren't that healthy. And a lot of people that are into like fitness and stuff aren't really into like the weird shit in society and in the, the art sphere. So we're trying to merge those two things and just make a really positive impact as best as we can. You know, the slogan is death comes lifting is for the children like Wu-Tang, you know? So. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Well, awesome. I'm uh, I'm excited for when we hop back on and uh, chat about uh, the, the long uh, not, not told yet story. It's a, uh, I mean, you can ask a couple people in the group. I got, I got drunk and told it. <laughs> so yeah. we will, uh, we'll be talking about that soon, but thank you so much for doing this. And uh, I look forward to that. Yeah. Thank you, man. I, uh, I really appreciate it. And you know, I, I'm happy to do this anytime. So thank you. It's been a pleasure. Hell yeah.